the heart of Rana Paramita Sutra. When Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva was practicing the profound Prana Paramita, he illuminated the five skandhas and saw that they are all empty, and he crossed beyond all suffering and difficulty. Shariputra, form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness. Emptiness itself is form. So, to a feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness. Shariputra, all dharmas are empty of characteristics. They are not produced, not destroyed, not defined, not pure, and they neither increase nor diminish. Therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, feeling, cognition, formation, or consciousness, no eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, or mind. No sight, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, or dharmas. No field of the eyes up to and including no field of mind consciousness. And no ignorance or ending of ignorance. Up to and including no old age and death or ending of old age and death. There is no suffering, no accumulating, no extinction, no way, no, and no understanding and no attaining. Because nothing is attained, the Bodhisattva, through reliance on prana paramita, is unimpeded in his mind. Because there is no impediment, he is not afraid, and he leaves distorted dream thinking far behind, ultimately nirvana. All Buddhas of the three builders of time attain Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi through reliance on param, prana paramita. Therefore, know that Prana Paramita is a great spiritual mantra, a great bright mantra, a supreme mantra, an unequaled mantra. It can remove all suffering. It is genuine and not false. That is why the mantra of Prana Paramita was spoken. Recite it like this. Gete, gete, para gete, para sam gete, bodhisattva, svaha. The general explanation of the title, The Heart of Prana Paramita Sutra. Commentary, the explanation of the Heart Sutra will be divided into two sections, a general explanation of the title and an explanation of the meaning of the text. The general explanation of the title will be further divided into a discussion of the sutra title and a discussion of the translator. Seven categories of titles have been devised for the three treasuries, Tripitaka, and the twelve divisions of the sutras spoken by the Buddha. One, the first kind of title refers exclusively to persons. The Buddha speaks of Amitabha Sutra is an example, since both Shakyamuni and Amitabha Buddha are personages. So, the Nirvana Sutra is an example of a title which is determined exclusively by reference to Dharma. Nirvana, which signifies a Dharma, Dharma Laksana, is used for its title. Three, in the third category, are titles comprised of analogies. The Brahma Net Sutra is an example of this kind of title. The text of the sutra employs in its discussion of the precepts, the rules of moral conduct taught by the Buddha. The analogy of the cylindrical net curtain belonging to the king of the great Brahma heaven. The curtain is a manifestation of his adornments. All through the net curtain are holes. And in the empty space of each hole, there is a precious pearl, each of the brightest and most valuable of all pearls. All the way around, the precious pearls illuminate each other with light, with light, and the emptiness interpenetrates. This precious pearl illuminates that precious pearl back and forth. That is what is meant by their illuminating each other. Your light illuminates my light, and my light 
the luminous rods. However, the lights do not oppose one another. One of them is incapable of saying, keep your light out of my light, or I don't want my light to shine on you. There is none of that. They illuminate each other, and the emptiness interpenetrates. In other words, the precepts are like the light of the precious pearls. They illuminate each other. If you keep the precept, that is, if you obey a rule of moral conduct without fail, it emits light. Each precept you keep has light. Each of the ten major and forty-eight minor bodhisattva precepts, which are explained in the Brahman Net Sutra, emits rays of light, just like the pearls in the Brahman Net curtain. Why are the precious pearls embroidered in the holes? It indicates to us that originally, before we keep the Bodhisattva precepts, they are holes. How do we know they are holes? Because they are leaks, also called outflows, as Rava. Yet the leaks can be transformed into precious pearls. If you keep a precept, a precious pearl shines. If you break a precept, there is a leak. The light illuminates each other and the emptiness interpenetrates represents the Buddha Dharma, the minds of the Buddhas, the minds of the Bodhisattvas, and the minds of all living beings, every mind responding to every other mind with mind. How did the Buddhas realize Buddhahood? It was through the cultivation of the precepts. And Bodhisattvas as well must cultivate the precepts to become Buddhas. Living beings must also keep the precepts then they can cultivate and become Buddhas. All this represents transformation, and this transformation, thus the title of the Brahmanet Sutra, is comprised exclusively of analogy. The first three of the seven kinds of sutra titles are called the unitary three, while the next three kinds are called the dual three. For the first of the three kinds of dual title makes reference to both persons and dramas. The Manjul Sri asks about Prana Sutra is an example, since Manjul Sri is a person and Prana is a particular drama. 5. The next kind of title refers to both persons and analogies. The lion's draw of the first common sutra is an example. The first common Satagata is a person and the lion's roar is an analogy. The Buddha's exclamation of the drama is likened to a lion's roar. When the lion roars, the hundred beasts are terrified. 6. The sixth kind of title is established by reference to drama and analogy. In the heart of Prana Paramita Sutra, Prana Paramita is the drama and heart is the analogy. 7. The one remaining variation combines all three unitary elements, person, drama, and analogy. The sutra of the flowering adornment of the Buddha of Great Expanse, commonly known as the Avatamsaka Sutra, is the example here. This kind of title is said to be complete in one. Great Expanse symbolizes the substance of the drama and the Flowering adornment represents its function. The Dharma of Great Expanse was cultivated by the Buddha. In order to realize Buddhahood, he cultivated the six paramitas and the ten thousand practices and used the flowering of those causes to adorn the attainment of the supreme fruit, which is Buddhahood. The five categories of recondite meaning. Now I will explain the text of the sutra by means of the eight line verses, which I wrote some time ago. I used them once before to lecture on this sutra. This is the first verse. Wonderful wisdom can reach the other shore right now. The true mind itself can merge with the enlightenment source. Drama and analogy comprise its title, which transcends the relative. Empty of the characteristics of all drama is this substance beyond words. 
fundamental non-attainment is its purpose and intent. And by using its power of eradication, the three obstacles are cleansed away. The butter division is determined to be the meaning of this teaching. A maha turning around, this is the prana boat. Commentary Each of the eight lines of the first verse speaks about the heart of Prana Paramita Sutra according to the five categories of recondite meaning. One explanation of the title. The first three lines of the verse explain the meaning of the title of the sutra in accordance with the first category of recondite meaning, the explanation of the title. Wonderful wisdom can reach the other shore right now. Prana is wonderful wisdom and paramita means to reach the other shore. When you use the wonderful wisdom of prana, you reach the other shore. The true mind itself can merge with enlightenment source. To say true mind is to speak both of the mind and of prana. When you have the wonderful wisdom of prana, you have the true mind, and so you naturally merge with the source of enlightenment. You are united with the original enlightenment of the Buddha. You join with it. You flow into and become the substance of the original enlightenment. Merge implies uniting into a single substance. Drama and analogy comprise its title, which transcends the relative. The title, the heart of Prana Paramita Sutra, is made up of references to both drama and analogy. The phrase which transcends the relative indicates a drama which reaches a state of non relativity. Prana Paramita is that drama, and heart is the analogy. There are three types of prana, the prana of language, the prana of contemplative illumination, and the prana of the characteristic of actuality. The prana of the characteristic of actuality is the ultimate wisdom, wonderful wisdom, and the wisdom which penetrates to the foundation. It can also be said to be the wisdom which arrives home and the wisdom of the Buddha. What else can it be called? It is called the true heart. In Chinese, the character sin means both heart and mind. The word heart in the Sanskrit title of the sutra is translated as Daya. The usual Sanskrit word for mind or heart in the non-physical sense is Sita. The Chinese character Sin is used as a translation for both Daya and Sita. The true heart is wisdom. Wisdom is the true heart because the prana can be translated true heart. The 250 or so words of this sutra are the heart within the heart. The heart within the 600 chapters of the prana text of the great prana sutra. Yet, in still another way, it is the heart within the heart. The sutra is the heart of prana, and since prana is the heart, it is the heart of that heart. And therefore, the text is called the Heart Sutra. Since prana can be translated as heart of all mind, the Great Prana Sutra can be called the Great True Heart Sutra. It's not a false heart, not a false mind. The present sutra explains the formally the wonderful principle of its actual use. The drama in the title is Prana Paramita, the drama of reaching the other shore. Heart is the analogy, and it is used in the sutra to indicate that the heart, which is to say the mind, is the theme of one's entire life and that it transcends all opposites. 2. Discernment of the substance. Empty of the characteristics of all dramas is the substance beyond words. What is the sutra substance? It is empty of the characteristics of all dharmas, a phrase which is different in wording but identical in meaning to the line in the sutra text. All dharmas are empty of characteristics. 
empty of characteristics simply means that the substance of the sutra is without any characteristics and the substance beyond words means that nothing can be said about it. Since its substance is empty of the characteristics of all dramas, there isn't anything at all. You ask, then what is there that is worth saying? This substance beyond words has already passed beyond the characteristics of speech, the characteristics grasped by the mind, the, character the characteristics of written language. It has passed beyond all characteristics. It is all dramas. 3. Elucidation of its basic purpose. Fundamental non-attainment is its purpose and intent. The fifth line of verse explains the third recondite meaning. Elucidation of the Sutra's basic purpose. Fundamental non-attainment. In one passage, the Sutra says, there is no understanding and no attaining. Non-attainment is the Sutra's purpose and intent. Now I will make use of worldly dramas to explain the Buddha drama. The word person is an ordinary noun, the designation by which human beings are distinguished from other categories. Just as a person is simply called a person, analogously every sutra is called a sutra. Now, what is a certain person's specific name? The name by which he is identified is perhaps Smith or Brown. To discuss the specific name is what is meant by explanation of the title. What does Smith look like? Is he tall or short, black or white, fat or thin? What about his body? In Chinese, the single character T, T means both body and substance. Is it fully formed or not? Does it have eyes, ears, or nose? That is what is meant by investigating the characteristics of his substance. After the substance has been revealed, then the basic purpose should be elucidated. What is meant by elucidation of the basic purpose? Smith is very learned. He could be a secretary or a PhD. That is what is meant. 4. Discussion of the function. Continuing the analogy, what does Smith do all day? What can he do? Observations of that sort reveal the person's usefulness and capabilities. And by using its power of eradication, the three obstacles are cleansed away. Eradication is what the sutra is capable of doing. What can the heart of Prana Paramita Sutra do? Its function is to cleanse away the three obstacles. The retribution obstacle, the activity obstacle, and the affliction obstacle. Of retribution obstacles, the first of the three obstacles, there are two kinds, dependent retribution and primary retribution. In Chinese, the character bao, bao means both reward and retribution. Primary retribution is the body, while dependent retribution refers to food, clothing, dwelling, and so forth, the material environment on which the body is dependent. Therefore, primary retribution is the retribution you are undergoing right now. The dependent retribution is your environment. There are all sorts of primary retribution. Some bodies are good ones and some are not. Some are especially full and handsome in their appearance so that everyone who sees them likes them. Merely by looking upon a particular body, everyone loves and respects the person as someone who is outstanding. Perhaps a particular person really has wisdom or another really has good rules. With respect to good rules and wisdom, there are two types of people. First are those who have wisdom and no good rules. What are those people like? Most of them are weird ghosts and monstrous demons who have come into the world as people. They were mountain essences who, after a long time as old spirits and ghosts became capable of eating people, and when they died, they were able to be reborn as people possessed a little bit of intelligence. 
compared to most people, they are intelligent, but they muddle up everything they do. Their activities are not at all intelligent. They do whatever is harmful, and without exception, they lack propriety. Everything that is most harmful to people and disruptive to the order of society is what they want to do. Such people, the ones who have some wisdom but no good rules, seem only to be afraid that the world won't be in disorder. The second kind, those who have good rules but no wisdom, are those who, in their lives, exclusively performed good deeds but did not study the sutras. As a consequence, they don't have much wisdom. In fact, they are very stupid. Some people undergo the primary retribution of being especially ugly. Others have both a um, beautiful and full appearance and a long life full of wealth, honor, and respect. Still, others have a very short life besides being ugly. There are all kinds of primary retributions, which are the fruits of causes planted in the past. Dependent retribution consists of one's living conditions, clothes, food, and so forth. It too comes from causes in your previous lives. If in previous lives you planted seeds of good, the fruition in this life will be a good reward. If in former lives you planted the seeds of evil, they will reveal themselves in this life by their fruition in your retribution. Therefore, you should certainly be very cautious in everything you do. If you do not plant the causes of evil, then in the future you will undergo their fruition in evil retribution. The second is of the the second of the three obstacles is the activity obstacle. Not only those who have left the home life to become members of the sangha. The sangha is the community of Buddhist bhikshus, monks, and bhikshunis, nuns. But also those at home should certainly have an occupational activity. While involved in a particular activity, many problems will arise. Many difficult situations which will make you afflicted and unhappy. That is what is meant by the activity obstacle. The third obstacle is the affliction obstacle. Everybody has afflictions, yet where do they come from? Most are generated from thoughts of greed, of anger, and of stupidity. How can you acquire afflictions? Have greed in your mind, in say terrible greed, and afflictions will arise. How else can you acquire afflictions? Have a temper. A situation isn't right for you, and so you become afflicted with anger. Again, how do you give rise to afflictions? By being stupid, you misunderstand situations, and so are afflicted. Why do you become afflicted? Thoughts of contempt, of arrogance, and of condescension generate afflictions. So furthermore, you doubt everything, and because of your doubting, you become afflicted. Why are you still afflicted right now? Because you have different views and see situations incorrectly. If no matter what is happening, you have proper knowledge, proper views, and genuine wisdom, you will see very, very clearly and will understand completely. When clarity and understanding appear in the midst of circumstances, then there is no affliction. It is the different views of greed, hatred, stupidity, arrogance, and doubt that produce the affliction obstacle. The Heart Sutra can remove the three obstacles: the retribution obstacle, the activity obstacle, and the affliction obstacle. How? It contains the genuine, wonderful wisdom, which is the unmoving mind of true suchness, and so it removes and destroys the three obstacles. Wonderful wisdom. If we understand the heart of Prana Paramita Sutra, then we can have that genuine wisdom, and with genuine wisdom, you can we can remove and destroy the three obstacles. Five determination of the characteristics of the teaching. The fifth recondite meaning is described by the seventh line of the verse. The butter division is determined to be the meaning of this teaching. 
the Prana, uh, Prana Paramita Sutra belongs to the Bhatta division. Bhatta represents the fourth or Prana period of the five periods of the Buddha's teaching, the Maha turning around. This is the Prana boat. Maha is a Sanskrit word for great. To turn the Prana boat around doesn't mean to turn it over. If you turn it over, there isn't any Prana. You should turn your stupidity around. And that will be the Prana boat. That is Prana. It can be compared to moving a boat upstream. It is necessary to use a little effort and it is not something that can be done easily. Also, you don't need to take three great Asamgya compass, three incalculably long ages. You must pass through at least one or two or perhaps three lifetimes before you can attain genuine wisdom. Oh, you say, even though it doesn't require compass, it's still a really long time, so I'm not going to cultivate. If you don't want to cultivate, it's not necessary. Certainly no one will force you. Forcing is not the way. Where my own disciples are concerned, I allow anyone who wants to fall to fall according to his own inclinations. If you don't want to turn the prana boat around, then you can follow the great flow. You can follow the great flow, flow along with the current and go downstream, go farther and farther down. If you turn around, you move upstream, and if you don't turn around, you flow downstream. Take a look. Are you going upstream or downstream? The butter division refers to the milk products analogy for the periods of the Buddha's teaching. The analogy is found in the Maha Bariyunibbana Sutra, and was used by the Tiantai school in conjunction with the five periods of the Buddha's teaching. In the analogy, the original Dharma nourishment is taken to be fresh milk. In each successive period, it becomes richer and more purified, yet it is all the same basic substance, the source nourishment. Butter represents the prana teachings of the fourth period to which the Heart Sutra belongs. The five periods of the Buddha's teaching and the milk products analogy are these. 1. Avatam Saka, 21 days, whole milk, Sira. 2. Agama um, Gadava, 12 years, coagulated milk, Dahi. 3. Vaipulya, 8 years, cut. Neva Nita, four Prana Paramita, twenty two years, Bhattak Da, five Sa Dhamma Pundarika, Maha Parinivana, eight years, clarified Bhattak Yi.